Okay, this is Kimberly Gonzalez. I'm an application engineer with Progression Technology. We're going to go over appearances and how to create custom appearances. First, we're going to talk about what are appearances. Appearances are what defines the visual properties of a model, including the colors and textures. Materials have appearances applied to them, but materials do a little more than just the appearance. They apply the physical properties, the mass, the tensile strength, and so forth. So appearances by themselves are not what gives the model the material properties. Okay. Now there is a hierarchy when applying appearances. In a part model, you can add appearances to faces, features, bodies, and the entire part itself. When you're in an assembly model, all you can do is add appearances to a individual component. You cannot apply appearances to separate faces or features when you're in an assembly model. So there are some differences there. Now, appearance types. There are two different types that we can work with. Procedural appearances. Those are the ones that just apply colors, basically. It wraps around the entire reference, the model. It's a, usually one color or a blend of colors. Some examples would be brushed aluminum or white high gloss plastic. Then we have textural. Textual appearances are, are, say, JPEG images that are mapped around the reference. Okay, they represent complex coloring, colorings, and again, you use the mapping features to wrap those around the model. And some of the examples that are already in SolidWorks would be the brick appearances, such as fire brick or polished polishes ash, polished ash. Sorry. <laughs> Now I'm going to go back. I'm going to take a look here in SOLIDWORKS and we're going to go over how we can start creating custom appearances. Now that we've talked a little bit about what the appearances are. So I have a model here of just a sphere. It's just a circular sphere here. And we're going to come over here to the appearances tab over in the task pane. And we're going to pick a material to start with. It doesn't really matter what we do. We're, what you would usually do is pick a material that's close to what you want to um, replicate. So we're going to look at here the painted car paints under the painted folder car. And I want to do something green. You notice there's nothing green here. So I'm going to just pick something and I'm going to drag it over to my model. This is a car paint that has a little gloss added to it. And I'm going to select to put it to the entire part. Then once I get that done, I'm going to right click on the model, the graphics area, and I'm going to come over here and select on the actual appearance that was applied at the part level. And that will allow me to edit it. From here, I can come and pick different colors, and it's just that simple. You just apply something to start with that is in the realm of what you're looking for, make sure it has the gloss or if it's something you're looking for matte, you know, look for a material that's matte in finish. And you just come over here and you change the color to it. When you have that, make sure you change over here to the advanced tab and you're allowed to save the appearance. Okay. Make sure that you save this in a folder different from the standard uh, program folders that when you install, because if you do any of your custom items there and the program has to be reinstalled, you're going to lose any of those custom appearances. So you want to create a brand new folder and put it in there. Okay. So I'm going to, I've already got a folder created here on my desktop. I'm going to go to Custom Appearances, and I'm going to give this a new name. I'm going to call it Green. 
and I'm going to save it. It's going to ask me, do I want to add that folder over here in the task pane under my appearances? Do I want to wait and make the folder visible? I'm going to say yes. And then I can close out of the appearances over here to the left. And I should have that new appearance here. They see the new folder and I have green. So I could put subfolders in there and, and categorize, categorize it out a little more in detail if I'd like. But you create your own folder. And now I have a new custom appearance. This is a procedural appearance. It's just basic colors, nothing fancy about it. So I'm going to come back over here. And I'm going to remove this appearance. We're going to look at now textural appearances. So again, I'm going to start with something that already has texture in it. I'm going to go to Fabric, Cloth, and I'm going to apply the burlap to it. Okay. Now I can come back and edit this by right-clicking on the item in the graphics area and selecting the appearance that was applied to the part. Okay. In the Advanced tab over here, I'm going to come down and pick a new image. So under Image, I'm going to Browse. Now, I've already looked up on the Internet and found the JPEG file that I wanted. This is a JPEG file. Let me show you that just outside of SolidWorks. It's just a JPEG pop file of a woven fabric. This is woven metal. So it's just a simple JPEG image. Okay. I'm going to select that to open, and it applies the image to my model. Now, from there, with this being a textural appearance, I need to do a little bit extra work here with mapping to make sure that it wraps around my part correctly. So I'm going to go over to the Mapping tab. And under Mapping, I'm going to pick Cylindrical because that's the shape that I'm working on. And you notice how it changes the image and it maps it properly for the shape that I'm working with. Okay. So that's about all there is to that. Not much else we have to do. So we have our JPEG image saved onto the model here. And I'm going to come back to the color image tab. And I'm going to save this appearance. And I'm going to call this one Woven Metal. And I save. I'm putting it in that same folder. You can create a new folder if you like for textual appearances. And then I close out of that. And I come over here and I have Woven Metal. Now if I wanted to apply a color to that. And I already have it applied. I don't have to reapply it. I could just come in and do another edit. And I could come over here to the color image. I'm going to go back to basic. Check color. And I can change that to a different color. So now I have blue woven metal. Okay. The mapping should be the same. Cylindrical. I'm going to ex go back to base, make sure I'm in basic, color image, or sorry, advanced color image, and I'm going to save. So basically, I just picked a new color. I'm going to save this appearance. I'm going to call it blue woven metal. And then accept that to get out of it. And I should have three custom appearances in here now. So there's not much to it. The biggest thing is start with a, um, an appearance that is similar to what you're trying to achieve. There's less work to do. 
whether you want it to be glossy if it's just a color one or matte, and then pick an appearance if you want to do textural, pick one that has a textural appearance already applied to it. That way you get the mapping properties when you go to customize it. Okay, so there's not much to that. It's a pretty simple process. I think people just aren't aware of the process that's taken, but it's, it's pretty simple. A couple of things to keep in mind. <clears throat> you can create custom color swatches as well. You have to choose a method to define your colors, the RGB or the HSV, and then you choose a method to select your colors. Okay, so let's go back to SOLIDWORKS and take a look at that real quick. Okay, so if I'm in appearances, and I want to create a custom color swatch, you see this little icon here? That's all I have to do is select there. And I rename it, I give it a new name. And then I just start picking colors. I start adjusting my colors to what I want them to look like. You see a preview up here. And then I can add the current color to the swatch. And then I go find another color. And again, you have to decide if you want to do RGB or HSV. But then I just go and find colors that I want to add to it. I can adjust it through the options here to fine tune it. Nothing too difficult. And I have a new color swatch. And that's really all there is to it. It's already been saved. So if I come back to it, I have the colors that I need. I can close this, go back to my appearances, and my new color swatch is still there. Now we've created this woven textural appearance here and we put it on a spherical or cylindrical model here and when I created I chose that option in the mapping. I want to come over here to a different shape and show you that I can apply those same textural even though we saved it as spherical or cylindrical, sorry, I can bring it over here on a spherical item and I just have to reset the mapping on it. So I'll come over here and I edit. And when I go to mapping, I can just change the type of mapping to make it look correct on this particular model and its shape because cylindrical isn't going to work on this one. But even though I saved the original appearance as cylindrical, I'm still able to change that when I put it on a different shape model. Okay. So something else to keep in mind before we wrap up here if you're going to be emailing models that have custom appearances, there's two things that you can do. You can either go into the properties, the option so under document properties, and there is an option here under model display. You would check the box for store appearance decal and scene data in the model file. Now this increases the file size, so this isn't the recommended method and a lot of people don't like to use this one because it increases the file size. You can also do a pack and go and when you do a pack and go you have several options of checkbox at the top. As long as you check the box for include custom decals, appearances, and scenes, whenever you do the pack and go and you send this to someone they will have the appearances needed to view the model correctly. Just keep that in mind to make sure you do one of these two so they have those custom appearances that you created. Okay. 
So not much to it. Just pick a appearance that is close to what you're trying to achieve and make those few adjustments in the colors. Maybe if it's textural, add a new JPEG file to it to create a new textural appearance and then just save it. Okay, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today and hope that y'all have